All right, so we're looking at the first FRQ in the 2025 AP Physics 2 exam. So let's take a look at this question. So we have a very long wire one carries current I in the plus X direction along the line Y equals zero. That's one, this one here. Very long wire, wire two carries current I in the plus X direction along the line Y equals positive D. Point P is located right here along wire one at the, or, at the origin as shown in figure one. The diameters of the wires are small compared to the distance between the wires. Both wires are in the XY plane. So complete the following tasks in the figures. Use arrows or the symbol shown in the box. Indicate the direction of the magnetic field from wire two. So this is, this thing's going to have, so wire two is going to create a magnetic field. We use our right hand rule. Our thumb's going to be pointing to the right. My fingers will curl. It's going to curl over the top of this, go into the page here. Then on the back side, it's, so it's gonna, my fingers would curl like this and come out of the page there. So the magnetic field is going to be going into the page there. So I would put an X at that point. Indicate the direction of the magnetic force exerted on wire one by wire two. So that's where we're gonna use the magnetic force is the IL cross, or sorry, the IL cross B, because we have a wire throwing a magnetic field. So our index finger points to the right. That's the direction of the current. Our middle finger points to the direction of the magnetic field, so it's going into the page, so my thumb points up, and that is the direction of the force. So FB is gonna be there, and so my answer is going to be a straight up magnetic force arrow like that, okay. A very long wire three carrying two I in the positive X direction is placed in the XY plane along the line Y equals Y three. The net magnetic force on wire one by the currents two and three is zero. So we have another wire up here Okay, that has a current 2i going in this direction at y equals y3, right? That's the whole idea. And we're saying that the net force is going to be zero. So let's get rid of this. So as you see, because they're moving in the same direction, they're, um, you know, this, uh, uh, this guy is going to be feeling a downward force from wire one. And then actually it's saying that the net force the net force on wire one by the currents. So wire one has a net force of zero. Okay, so we we got to think about this guy having a force this way, right? That's what we just said in part A. So that's the force from wire two. So that we need this guy to create a force downward like this from wire three. However, uh, in order for that force to be downward, if the current is still going in the positive x direction, and they said positive x direction for the current, then we're going to have to put it below it in order to have that force. So it's gonna be need to be down here, right? So that's gonna be two I going this way, and this is gonna be Y is equal to Y3. And we've got to figure that out. And that's gonna be a negative value because it's gonna be below it. And we want those two forces to be equal, okay? So magnetic force, because it's already perpendicular, it's just ILB. So we would just say the magnetic force, so the net force is equal to zero, MA, which is equal to zero. Right, and so that means F2 minus F3 is gonna be zero. F2 is gonna be ILB, because they're already perpendicular, right? And the magnetic field, this is the magnetic field from, um, uh, so so this is the current, so we're talking about, the, when you do the ILB, the I is the current that's traveling through the magnetic field. This is the magnetic field from B2. This is the magnetic field from B3. And both of these are I equals the same I. This is the confusing part sometimes for people because the force equation, the I refers to the current that is experienced the, experiencing the force. The B is caused by the other wires. So the B refers to wire two and wire three, but I is the same in both cases because we're talking about the same object here, the same object wire one. So in this case, then, um, then you have to recognize that I, L, the, B, the magnetic field from a wire is mu naught I divided by two pi R. Okay, so from magnetic field from wire two, wire two has a current uh, I, right? So this is mu naught I divided by two pi. And what's the distance from wire two to wire one is D, okay? Minus I L in the magnetic field for three is mu naught. And the current through wire three is two I and then the distance between this third wire and this guy right here is Y3, All right? So Y3, and that equals zero, okay? So you can actually move them to the other side and you can divide out the ILs, you can divide out the mu, you can actually divide out one of the I's. Oh, sorry, there's a two pi here. You can cancel out the two pi's, so you get this one over D 
and then move this to the other side is 2 over y3. So y3 is going to be cross multiply is going to be 2d, but it's below the x-axis. So, so y3 is just the distance. So below the x-axis, so then y3 has to equal negative 2d for the, the mathematical expression there. Okay, so a little bit tricky, just making sure you understand the ILB equation. All right, so wire three has moved very far away from wires one and two, so it's kind of gone now. Circular conducting loop in the XY plane is initially at re held at rest below wire one. The loop is then moved at constant speed in the negative Y direction, so it's moving downward, because they say positive Y is upwards. Indicate whether there's a clockwise induced current in the loop or counterclockwise in the loop or no induced current in the loop. Okay, so now what we have to think about, this is gonna be Lenz's law, Faraday's law. We first have to identify what is the current flux going through the loop. Okay, so these things are creating a magnetic field in a magnetic field that's going into the page, right? From our right hand rule, our fingers curled down, it's going into the page. So, and now the magnetic field is weakening because it's mu naught i over two pi r. The i isn't changing, but the distance we are from the wire is increasing. So because the r is increasing, the magnetic field is decreasing as we move down. So that means we are having less flux into the loop. And if we have less flux into the loop, Lenz's law says to compensate that is we're going to induce some flux into the loop. To compensate for the, the, the flux into the loop decreasing, we're going to increase. So this is our induced magnetic field, magnetic field from the current. So then we have to use our right hand rule, which way would the currents need to then flow in order to induce that magnetic field? And that's going to be a current. If you look at the top section, in order to have a, something into the page, it would have to go to the right like this and then down at the bottom to curl into it, if it was below it, to curl again into the page, it would have to be that way, and that is the clockwise direction. Clockwise direction, and so your justification that you're gonna say here is the, the flux through the loop is into the page and decreasing because the magnetic field is weaker as it moves further away. Okay, so that's talking about that. That's how we understand the change in flux. Um, the induced B field will be into the page to oppose this change. This is invoking Lenz's law. And so the current is so the induced current is clockwise. And if you want to be very precise, you could say by the right hand rule. But you don't need to necessarily state that as long as you just make that connection there. Okay, and that's the first FRQ.